Glory to Jesus Christ. So, uh, I'm reading the, for the Rites of Eastern Christendom, the second volume by Archdale King, A.A. A. King, published by AMS Press, and it doesn't say exactly what AMS Press is, New York, New York, 1948, and uh, the uh, selection from a uh, selection from the uh, the second volume, the Chaldean Rite, and I'm on page 285. Modern times, it's called, because modern times means the uh, first half of the 20th century, or even earlier than that maybe from 1880s. Maybe even earlier than that. It goes up to, starts in 1843 for modern times, so, which is almost a century ago. So, and this is page 285, 285. So let's pray. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A large number of Nestorians were massacred by the Kurds. So it, he uses Nestorian uh, Archdale King rather than Assyrian Church. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he uses Assyrian. Uh, but it usually says Nestorian. For the, <coughs> uh, the Church of the East, the, uh, not in full communion with the Catholic Church. A large number of Nestorians were massacred by the Kurds in 1843 and 1845. But in the latter year, the Chaldean Catholics were recognized by the Turkish government as a separate millet. We've talked about the millet system before, uh, that your, your religion and ethnicity was sort of joined together. And he calls this, as such a quote, the Chaldean nationality. So and they, and the Millet would have some degree of autonomy over their com the, the community. So and, and uh, before that, they would have been the uh, Assyrians and the Chaldeans would have been considered one. Uh, so because the uh, the for the most part, the Muslims couldn't tell the difference. A synod which had not been formally approved by Rome because of the unsettled conditions caused by the troubles with the Church of Malabar. And we talked about that too. The, uh, the missions of the Church of the East to India going way back, uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, the church there in India claimed uh, foundation by the Apostle Thomas. So uh, there are these uh, the Syrian... Uh, origin Christianities are often called Ma Thoma after Master Thomas, St. Thomas the Apostle. Uh, Ma being a very common title uh, in uh, Syrian Christianity, uh, Master, Lord, whatever. So uh, for saints, for bishops, for people like that. So, um, Troubles with the Church of Malabar was held in 1853 at the monastery of Rabban Ormiz. That, that, that monastery has come up a lot in our readings here. Uh, under the presidency of Father Benedict Planchet, who is obviously not uh, of Chaldean origin, of uh, Iraqi or Syrian origin who, before the termination of the proceedings, was appointed apostolic delegate for Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia between the two rivers, that's uh, 
the heartland of, of Iraq. They're coming from uh, the north, Assyria, etc., down, down to the south, old Babylonia, and uh, Sumer, down, down, by, well, the coast has, uh, had grown over the millennia. So, uh, The Patriarchate of Joseph IV Audo, from 1847 to 1878, was a critical one for the Chaldean Church. The bull, Re Versus, Re Versus, let me look closely at this italicized thing here, Re Versurus, Re Versurus, in 1867, which was which was followed by a schism among the Armenians, nearly produced a similar result in this rite when the Pope, by the bull, Cum Ecclesiastica Disciplina, August 31st, 1869, attempted to apply the same measure to the Chaldeans. The chief point at issue was the requirement that papal confirmation must precede, and that's italicized, emphasized, the consecration of a bishop. Whereas the Patriarch maintained that such a demand was contrary to the express promise of Rome that Eastern customs would be preserved in their integrity. The Chaldean Patriarch acted as the spokesman for the Eastern Catholics at the Vatican Council. This is Vatican I, in the, which uh, was suspended in 1870. And he was the last speaker in the debate on bishops. January 25th, 1870. His speech was translated into Latin. The Patriarch made a strong distinction between dogma and matters of discipline. In the things of faith, whatever may be decreed by the Council will be accepted as a matter of course. But concerning canons of discipline, the like cannot be said. The Orientals are so tenacious of their ancient discipline that even small things cannot be changed without tumult and scandals and danger in soul, to, danger to souls. And that's from Don Cuthbert Butler's The Vatican Council, this uh, volume one, pages 224 to 225. So that really sets so the doctrine that uh, your ecumenical councils have the say in this, you know, that they, so they, they will will accept all of that, embrace all of that, uh, do, doctrinal definitions and the like. But disciplines, disciplines of the Eastern churches are not the affair of the Latin church. That that's, that they, and they said uh, in the reunions, they said the, the customs, their catalog and all this stuff would be respected as long as it wasn't contrary to the Catholic faith. Uh, so, uh, and uh, selecting their own bishops was one of them. And so, uh, so this, because the issue was that the papal confirmation must precede the consecration of a bishop. rather than follow afterwards, accept that. It was therefore urged that disciplinary canons should not be applied indiscriminately to churches. This is to churches within the, uh, the, the very Eastern churches within the uh, Papal Catholic Communion there. But each patriarch should consider reforms in a, quote, national synod. So. So if they're reforms, if, if the canons of the thing have to be changed, they should be changed by the hierarchs and theologians as it, of that particular church, of that right, <coughs> rather than uh, Westerners <coughs> imposing their own stuff on this. <coughs> uh, page 287. As a practical solution, the Patriarch begged the Pope to allow the Eastern bishops to discuss among themselves any disciplinary canon which the Council might see fit to pass, 
and that a corpus, a body, of canon law, did a little collection there, of canon law for the Oriental churches might be proposed. So we see this, you know, because we, uh, that was done uh, for then, and then uh, we also have that uh, now since Vatican II, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the call to uh, have these things uh, more and more traditional, uh, Eastern traditional, and more and more uh, done in subsidiarity, done, done uh, not from uh, distant above, but more, more the local thing, but done by the, by the particular church, the patriarch or the major archbishop and the, uh, the bishops and uh, all the people who are, traditionally would be uh, involved in that. That's what should be done. <clears throat> which would combine these canons with the old canons and constitutions. Finally, it was proposed that this new code should be submitted to the council for approval. If changes in such matter, matters, said the patriarch, would make the return of the separated Eastern churches to Catholic unity more difficult. Because they're going to say, well, uh, if the churches, Eastern churches did communion with them, if they're uh, being treated... Um, uh, as uh, uh, mistreated uh, uh, and uh, uh, not able to to articulate, not permitted to articulate the, and, and make their own decisions within the church, said, so how much, why should we ever even consider uh, full communion with the, the Pope. The, so that, this is just underlining the fear of uh, quote-unquote papal totalitarianism that, that was, uh, unquote, that was a concern. And, and Western, Western imperialism. Because remember, this is, this is still the, that here in the 19th century, very, very much the age of Western imperialism. So, because we know better than these uh, of people, these non-Europeans, we know uh, much better than they know about all this stuff, or non-Euro-Americans. Uh, actually, they, they, uh, the empires usually uh, you know, put America down a few notches from theirs, of course. But um, as I said, remember, this is the this is still the Victorian era. Well, dissidents, that's what, that was a common uh, a title for the non-Catholic Easterners, which is, uh, is, is very ecumenical and very, uh, but um, it was very common. You know, uh, uh, Donald Atwater's book, The Dissident Churches of the East, volume two of his Churches of the East, um, so that using that term was before the council was very very common, but since then it's it's considered insulting, and rightly so. Although I suppose a dissident should be, would be uh, more properly for people who claim to be within the communion who are rejecting dogmas of the church or or. Uh, uh, moral teachings of the Catholic Church and stuff like that, so. which is, of course, a bigger problem in the West, the Western Church, than it is in the Eastern Churches, uh, the, the, when it comes to the moral issues in particular. Um, I'm talking about Catholic, people who call themselves Catholic, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, while dissidents had been reconciled on the distinct understanding that the canons, rights, prerogatives, constitutions, and customs of their respective churches would be respected. A violation of this contract, we could even say covenant, violation of this contract would be contrary to justice and a grave scandal to Catholics and schismatics alike. Again, schismatic applied to the... Uh, 
the quote unquote dissident uh, Eastern churches, the uh, Orthodox churches, uh, both uh, the Eastern Orthodox, the Oriental Orthodox, and the Assyrian Orthodox, or they are both is probably not the including, should we say, uh, those. Um, but uh, it's not actually proper unless these people actually left communion with the Catholic Church. If they were not uh, ever in communion with the Catholic Church, then they couldn't be schismatics. So, um, there we go. The, the Pope was immediately informed of the speech by Cardinal Barnabo, Prefect of Propaganda, Propaganda Fidei, and a notorious Latinizer, or Uniatizer, quote unquote, so that it was likely that nothing was lost in the telling. Pope Pius IX sent for the, quote unquote, offending patriarch, and after a severe reprimand, ordered him, under threat of deposition, to sign a paper undertaking to consecrate the two bishops whom the Pope had nominated two years before, but whom, in view of the prevailing agitation, the patriarch had failed to consecrate. It has been said that Joseph Abdo, Audo, on leaving the presence of the Pope, told the Eastern bishops that he did not consider himself bound by the forced signature. But in any case, the trouble persisted for several years, and in se September 1876, the patriarch was threatened with excommunication, so much for the uh, honoring the quote unquote contract. He was, of course, this is Pius the Ninth. Uh, he was, however, the Chaldean patriarch was among the 88 who, in the crucial ballot on July 13th in 1870, voted non placet, it is not pleasing to papal infallibility. And that's uh, cited from uh, the Vatican Council by Don Kumpel, Butler, Volume 2, page 1, 251. 251. So, he was, however, reconciled before his death two years later. And Pope Leo XIII, this is page 289, spoke of him as, quote, a bishop conspicuous for piety and religion. So, uh, yeah, Leo the Thirteenth was a lot more conciliatory than Pius the Ninth was. Certainly, Pius the Ninth towards the end. Rome. This is the middle of page. 288. Rome, however, wisely suffered the question of the appointment of Oriental patriarchs and bishops to lie in abeisance, abeyance. And Canon 1 of the New Code expressly states that it is only for the Latin Church. The Nestorians, in company with other dissidents, received an invitation to the Vatican Council. This was discussed by the bishops. This is the non-Catholic bishops. This is of the non-Catholic bishops, who unanimously replied, quote, we can decide nothing of ourselves. We will do what the patriarch does. Ma Shimon, the 18th, Ruben, 1861 to 1903, however, was not any more decided, and he answered that, Quote, it is difficult for me to give a reply, because for several years past, my nation has been under the protection of England, and I can do nothing without the English consul. Consul. Interesting. He told the Dominican that his hands were tied because of the support which his nation derived from England, although the English, quote-unquote, Protestantize our people. Quote, I detest Protestants, for Protestantism is the ruin of all religion. It would be more agreeable for me to be under the rule of the Pope than dependent on Protestants. 
I myself feel very inclined to Rome, but I am not free. That's the quote unquote Nestorian patriarch, the Assyrian patriarch at the time. Shumo, uh, Simon the 18th, Reuben. Finally, the Nestorian patriarch promised to write to the Holy Father, assuring him that together with the other Eastern patriarchs, he would submit to whatever the council might decide. It is not known whether the letter was ever sent, but there was certainly no tangible result. The Chaldean church was sadly divided from 1874 to 1889 over the consecration of bishops without the Pope's confirmation and the question of the schism in Malabar. But the attempt to found a quote-unquote old Catholic church was happily frustrated. Which would be... Um, uh, rejecting uh, rejecting papal infallibility and uh, rejecting Vatican I, but accepting what was before that. Uh, but that uh, would be a, 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 I think there are actually Eastern Rite Old Catholic groups. Uh, but anyway. Joseph the Sixth Audo was succeeded in the Patriarchate by Elias the Twelfth, Abolin, Yonan, Abol Yonan, Abol Yonan. Abol Yonan. Uh, is that Abel Jonas together? I don't know. Uh, 1878, 1894, in whose time the Chaldean Breviary and other liturgical books were published. The present patriarch. This is 1900, who became the apparently still patriarch of 1948. Emmanuel II Thomas, who became patriarch in 1900, in 1902 was accorded by Rome the title Delegate to the Nestorians. And two years later, two bishops with several priests in their congregations were reconciled to the Catholic Church. The two convert bishops, Beruari and Hakari, worked among the Nestorians in the mountains of Kurdistan, and two dioceses were in the process of formation. The First Great War, this is World War I, 1914 to 1918, however, crippled the activities of the Chaldean Church, and four di dioceses were destroyed. The Turks and the Kurds massacred no less than six bishops, including the learned Adai Sher, Bishop of Sert, and the two converts. Sixty priests and about 60,000 of the faithful. The Nestorians suffered even worse, much worse, probably. It is estimated that of the 30,000 existing before the war, at least four-fifths were killed. The hierarchy. So I probably, I'll probably skip this section because it's about uh, well, maybe I'll say something about the populations. In uh, this is in nineteen forty four. In the United States, there are small colonies of Chaldeans with about 5,000 faithful and two priests. So there's just two priests uh, at the time. Uh, at, uh, at the, uh, in the, towards the end of World War II. The first church of the right in the Western Hemisphere, St. Ephraim's in Chicago, was solemnly dedicated on September 19, 1944. In general, the Chaldeans of Detroit are from Mesopotamia, Iraq while those in the other cities were principally from Persia, Iran. Yeah, I don't, that's not the case anymore, I think. Uh, mostly Iraq. Mexico and South America are estimated to have about 5,000 Chaldeans. This, again, was in 1944. The secular priests, that is the diocesan priests, of, of the Chaldean church, it says, are for the most part very poor. So experiencing the uh, 
evangelical poverty uh, and, uh, and because of everybody was poor then after the, the massacres and the seizure of property and the uh, driving out. The Synod of Rabban Ormizd in 1853 directed that it should be more suitable and better if our clergy were not bound by marriage according to the usage of the Latin church. At the present time, there were only a few priests who were married at that time. The Nestorians have three minor orders. Awakener, Reader, and Subdeacon. So we just had the uh, installation or quote-unquote ordination of uh, two subdeacons at uh, the Immaculate Conception Mission in Boston uh, last month, I think it was. The Order of Awakener, this is page 292, which is peculiar to the right, is often held by a reader or even an aged priest. His office is to preside at the night office and sometimes also at funerals. The dissidents that this would be the Assyrian Orthodox. The dissidents speak of quote unquote. I would have to put that in. It's, as I say, it's, it's considered insulted now. Do we not use that term uh, after Vatican II? The dissidents speak of the hierarchy as corresponding to the nine choirs of angels, but in actual practice, ordination below the rank of deacon has fallen into disuse for the most part. Uh, again, that's 1944 they're talking about. Deacons, and, he's, and here he's talking about the Assyrian church. Deacons may be only seven or eight years old, while priests are sometimes not more than 15 or 16. The Nestorian priest may consecrate altars and a canon is tributed to the Council of Nicaea, which was in 325, says the core episcopus, the core bishop, that's not a bishop, okay. uh, anyway, it should be, uh, it's sort of like a monsignor, sort of, sort of like a, an archimandry, sort of like a proto-presbyter, proto uh, but uh, there's a distinction too, but it's uh, not much. Uh, should supervise the village priests that, that they consecrate altars, celebrate the holy mysteries, bless the oil, and learn the baptismal prayers. So that's from three, the Council of Nicaea 325, the 4th century, so that's great. A single formula serves for the ordination to the various orders, differing slightly from that in use among the West Syrians, the uh, uh, the, the Jacobite uh, church there, the Oriental Orthodox, uh, Syrian Oriel, or Oriental Orthodox. <clears throat> the Chaldeans have two minor orders, reader and subdeacon. So we saw that at uh, <coughs> the, 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 the uh, candidates uh, last month were made both reader and subdeacon. They were installed or quite unquote ordained since they're, they're minor orders, it's not major orders. The level of education is higher among the Catholics. So a seminary, a patriarchal seminary was established in Mosul in 1866. And they were present again, this is uh, 1944 about 33 students. The Seminary of the Dominicans in the same town was founded in 1877 and has about 40 Chaldeans. Again, this is 1944. In 1931, a fire preacher passed over to the Chaldean right. He had changed a Dominican, Latin right Dominican had changed his right completely to the Chaldean. A seminary for the Chaldeans in Persia, that's Iran, 
was opened in 1845 by the Lazarus with the French order <coughs> at Kozrova, which was reconstituted in 1923 in Ormia. Rezaia. There were also students at the Jesuit seminary in Beirut and in the College of Propaganda Fide in Rome. A great cultural work was carried out by Paul Bedjan, 1838 to 1920, a Chaldean born in Persia, who became a Lazarus priest. And the religious orders. This is page 293. As we have seen, monasticism was the glory of the Nestorian church. But today, the religious life among the dissidents is a thing of the past. So we saw uh, Mother Olga uh, uh, trying to uh, revive uh, a, a, a sisterhood, uh, and, uh, on, uh, especially on the lines of active Latin orders in the Assyrian church. But that didn't work out. Uh, and she became Catholic. And I was told she was Chaldean for one day, because she uh, is in the Latin rite now. But it was a great friend of the Chaldean mission here in the, in the Boston area. Before the First World War in 1914-1918, there were, however, women vowed to God as virgins living with their families, as was the custom in North Africa in the time of St. Cyprian, 258. But you could even say like uh, St. Rosalima, also a similar thing. She was a Dominican. Yeah. The Chaldeans have a small congregation of Antonian monks called of St. Ormizdas, which was founded by Gabriel Dembo in 1808. The rule is largely borrowed from the Maronites, with whom Father Dembo made his novitiate. The order was approved by Rome in 1830 and received official confirmation from Pope Gregory XVI in 1845 by the brief, by, anyway, it goes on and says a whole bunch of, of uh, stuff, but anyway. Gabriel, this is page 294. Gabriel Dembo obtained possession of the old ruined monastery of Rabban Ormiz, named after the original founder who died in the 7th century. Yeah, it's an historian there, he says. Uh, Church of the East. When, however, the house became, came in Catholic hands, the patron was changed to St. Ormida, Ormizdas. a 4th century martyr under Shapo II, whom the Roman martyrology commemorates on the 8th of August. In 1931, there were 20 hieromonks, that's a priest monk, and 35 monks, that would be, uh, who weren't priests, in three monasteries, Rabban Ormiz, near Alkosh, Natrath Zarai, a Lady Guardian of the Seed near Alkosh and St. George near Mosul. The Institute of the Sisters of the Immaculate Conception, a congregation of Chaldean sisters founded in 1922 at Baghdad, has two schools, again, this is in 1944, in the town and another in Mosul. The present conditions, okay, this is 1944-ish. <coughs> It is estimated that members of the Chaldean Rite number from 140,000 to 160,000, which nearly, with nearly 170 priests, about 75 religious and novices, and about 30 women under vows. The Nestorians probably less, number less than 60,000. Again, that's the Assyrian Church of the East. So but the, the great, uh, they suffered the most of the massacre. <coughs> At the time. Before the First World War, the Nestorians chiefly inhabited the mountains of Kurdistan, 
where the reverend and honored father of fathers and great shepherd, Ma Shumun the 19th, Patriarch and Catholicos of the East, lived in the mountain fastness of Cotchanes under the manner of the Prince Bishop of Montenegro under the Vladikas. So, the uh, quote unquote, I would say. The Patriarch prior to 1914 had five suffragan bishops, but now there is only one diocesan see, Ormia in Persia. That the others have been uh, uh, exterminated and the massacres. But there is, again, this is 1944. A uh, hundred thousand Nestorians are said to have been killed during the First Great War, including six bishops and hundreds of clergy. Because it was also because uh, the massacre of the Armenians, which are close to about a million. Their lot in the interlude of peace was not much happier. And when the British in 1932 gave up the mandate of Iraq, the Iraqis, after killing numbers of, this is, uh, numbers of Nestorians, decided that they ought to have a home outside the country. Several suggestions were made, but nothing was settled. And some 10,000 Nestorians have found a temporary residence in eastern Syria. At Baghdad, there are two Nestorian churches in the villages of the refugees. In Iraq, today, the, again, this is 1944, there are about 30,000 Nestorians with four bishops and 20 priests who, uh, because of the destruction of the seminaries and all sorts of stuff, their uh, destruction of the monasteries, destruction of, of, uh, of the churches and everything like that, the destruction of families, uh, clergy families that would pass this down. It said that there was uh, little or no instruction. In the north of the country, there are now no churches, and the divine office is celebrated in private homes. The present patriarch, again, this is 1944, Mashamun the 21st, Jesse, who succeeded to the office in 1918 as a boy of 13, and received much of his education from the Anglicans in England, returned to Iraq only to be expelled for refusing to take the oath of fidelity to King Faisal in 1933. So we'll stop there uh, and go on somewhere on page with the theology of the uh, which also gives the theology of the uh, this, uh, the, uh, 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 Nestorian theology quote unquote in uh, 1944 ish so let's pray the Our Father and the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the uh, Assyrian Church of the East, the Assyrian Orthodox Church of the East, uh, rightly is annoyed when they're labeled Nestorians. They say, Nestorius, whom they revere as a saint, did not found our church, they said. Our church was there long before him. So uh, there's that. Oh, and I have to get out of this couch. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Here I come. Okay. What's this? Oh, Judy Hardigan, hi there. Bye now.